Peggy 18. Colonel King. Mrs. King. I have a duty to my team to stay ahead of the curve. I understand, Rachel, but CENTCOM has given their orders. Orders? I'm now commanding officer. I'm sorry, Rachel. Somehow I doubt that very much. Ashley Tisdale, welcome. Now, Ashley plays Rachel in Supermassive Games' Dark Pictures Anthology's House of Ashes. All right, Ashley, what can you tell me about your character? My character, Rachel, is a CIA operative, mm -hmm. and the game's taken place in 2003, and she is on a mission to find chemical weapons, so she's pretty badass. Wow. Any particular parts of Rachel's character that you personally identify with? I don't personally identify with Rachel as no? much. You're not no. a CIA operative? No. no you never... I'm obsessed with okay. the CIA, and so I was very excited to play a character because I haven't gotten to do that on TV or movies yet, so mm -hmm. I was very excited to do that. And the horror genre, are you, do you feel at home in that genre? Do you I've love never that? done a horror no? film. No. <laughs> do you watch not. a lot of, a lot of horror? I do watch a lot of horror. It's Pazuzu. Pazuzu who? Pazuzu. Do you not watch horror movies? I'm more known for obviously doing comedy. Yeah. Um, but this is like, you know what? For me, I've always wanted to do an action film. And I am living out my action dreams doing this. Because yes, it is scary, but there's so much action adventure in it. And uh, it's pretty cool. It's pretty wild. Mm -hmm. Any particular things that scare you personally? What are you afraid of? Oh, I was actually just watching a really cheesy movie last night that was about a shark. And I have to say, even though it was cheesy, it scared the crap out of me. <laughs> when the shark shows up, it just like scares you so much. I love cheesy shark movies. Look what Jaws did to people in, in the ocean and swim. People didn't go in the bathtub But the technology after has that. gotten so much better That's since true. Jaws, and it's like, it's really scary. When people finally get the chance to play this game and take over these characters, what do you think they're going to really absolutely love about it? I think they're going to love the whole thing. It's dark, it's scary, but it's also a lot of like action adventure, and I think it's really entertaining, and they're going to have so much fun playing it. Cool, cool. How about all the characters? And there's a bunch of great characters in this game. Do you have a favorite? You can say your own. That's, that's OK. I mean, Rachel's pretty cool. I do love Clarice. I'm going to need access to your network. Who the hell are you? This is Dr. Stokes. I've given her full clearance. I bet you have. Claire, she played Clarice, she's super fun. And you know, there's a lot of guys in this game, so it's nice to have another female lead. Come on, Clarice. Clarice, get up, Clarice. There's a lost cause. The medication's back at the temple. We're carrying dead weight. We can't give up hope. Everyone's really cool. I mean, we all have so much fun and um, we kind of are just like here kind of killing it. <laughs> yeah, how has your experience been with the other cast? It must be really cool to just share this together. Yeah, I think that like what's so great is that everybody is really professional and obviously we're all coming into this new. None of us mm -hmm. had done a video game before, so it was just so different, but we all got it really fast. And so once you kind of get into the feel of it, you just kind of like jump up and do your stuff and it's really long days. It's not like Obviously on set sometimes on my TV shows, like I won't be in a couple scenes, so I'll have time to kind of like chill. Where this is like you have one lunch break, couple breaks during the day, but you were up like all day. And so it is definitely like physically a little draining because you're just like standing there and doing all this stuff, but it's nice to have a group of people that take it seriously and, um, but still have fun at the same time. So it's cool. Fuck, that's all we need. Is this place mined? Won't mind it, no. <laughs> so who had the most trouble with the headsets and banging into things? I feel like in the beginning when you put that on for the first time and you're talking to somebody, you're, you're like, oh, sorry about that. I think the weird part is, is that, you know, with acting, what's so interesting is that usually it's like the connection between okay. two and it being in the moment, obviously. And so I think it's been hard because you have to learn how to not touch each other. There's kissing that. scenes, you don't kiss. And so it's like very separate, which is so opposite of what you kind mm -hmm. of learn through acting. 
Um, so that is something that we've kind of been like, how do we do this? But it's like now we're so used to it that we like come into it and probably someone who's never seen it done before is just like, what is this? <laughs> cool. Now, I guess we have a couple rapid fire questions that I'd like to hit you with as well. Ready for this? Okay, so explore on your own or, or in a group? I'm more of a group person. <laughs> mm -hmm. I feel like that's always the downfall where they're like, let's split up, let's let's go out on our own. I know, I like to do things on my own, but if I'm gonna explore, I'm one of those people that I'm just like, oh my gosh, am I by myself? Oh my gosh, where is, you know, where are people? <laughs> like, I just kinda like, I have to be in a group. Okay, that's the smart approach. Yeah. Would you confront the monster or, or run away? Personally, I probably run, would run away because I'm more of someone who has like exit strategies. So I'm like, okay, if I'm faced with something that's scary, I will find the exit. Yeah, that's usually the way to go. Yeah. You think you can take it and then at the end, it's, it never ends No, I well. mean, I just have those nightmares where you're like trying to beat the bad guy, but then like it's slow motion and you can't do it really well. And I'm like, oh, that's not good. Yeah, I mean, you probably learn from this game itself. Sometimes maybe it's better to, to run away. Yeah. It's not as successful as you think it is. No. How about horror or, or musical? I would say musical, yeah. yeah. It's a Less bit scary. More light. <laughs> yeah. Although I feel like musicals, they have their own element of, of fear. I don't think yeah. so. No? no? I mean, I mean, for me, I can't sing in front of people. That would probably That's the scare thing. you, yeah. yeah. I would rather fight a monster than have to sing in front of a crowd, I think. I'm a singer, so it doesn't scare me. Okay. <laughs> now, you yourself in this situation, so say you were actually in this, how do you think you would fare? Do you think you'd be okay? I probably would have tapped out early on. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yes. That would have been it. You're like, no, uh, I'm not going no. in there. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. It's a really scary and action-packed game, so it's a lot. You too, Nick, you're coming with us. Come on, Rick. And I think that for me, I'd just be like, ooh, this is a lot. <laughs> so. yeah. Well, now that they've got you in the game, they can put you in anything. I know. I'm so excited because I've never been able to play something like this. Yeah, okay. Well, that's good. Cool. Thank you for doing this, Ashley. Thank you. Oh, this whole damn place is about to come down. Might could be another way out. Okay. All good? All good. Let's do it. We're here at Supermassive to talk about the next game in the Dark Pictures anthology, House of Ashes. And I'm joined by exec producer Dan. How are you doing? Hello. Thank you for joining us. Right, really cool. so let's start at the very start. We're going to be talking about House of Ashes for most of the interview, but for those that don't know, tell us about the Dark Pictures anthology. The Dark Pictures is a series of narrative, story-driven, branching horror stories. Each one is standalone. They each tell a different story, completely separated from the others, but within the same universe. So there is connection between them all. House of Ashes is set at the end of the Iraq War in 2003, with links um, 4,000 years ago that set the story up. So tell us more about the theme and themes, I suppose, within um, House of Ashes. It starts off with a, a military unit. They've got some new technology that can look for weapons of mass destruction underground. They think they've identified something in the Zagros Mountains in Iraq. And then as part of that, they come into conflict with an Iraqi unit. There's a pitched firefight. And then the two groups are plunged underground. There's an earthquake of some sort. And it's revealed that there's a hidden temple underground. You know, these big, massive structures. But these different groups, they're all separated. Um, radio contact is lost. And they're submerged in this black uh, darkness. Where on God's green earth have we landed? And then they're going to start hearing things and seeing things and people are going to start disappearing. What the f*** just happened? So this time it's a very real threat. All of the Dark Pictures games, they all pull something from, from real life or from history, from fact. What's the case with uh, the myth or historical part of, uh, of House of Ashes? So we love looking at, um, looking at and reading myths and legends and stories and doing our research. And we know our fans love it as well because there's something that they can link into afterwards. And, and I love doing that when I'm playing games or watching movies myself. So this one's set 4,000 years ago, the Akkadian Empire and this terrible evil that happened. We had this self-proclaimed God King, Naram Sin, and he essentially cursed his people. He sacked this temple and brought famine and, and devastation to his own people. And so a lot of the history is lost, but we've, we've done a lot of research about it. And then we had a lot of happy accidents that linked into the story we wanted to tell. And the fun thing for us is we get to, we get to do our own take on it. Mm. We get to twist it. And, and obviously we've made our own truth from it. At the end of the sneak peek, the trailer, we saw 
monsters. Tell us a bit more about what's going on there. The military unit that you're playing as, they don't really know what they're coming up against. They're not human, they're bigger, they're larger, they're faster. The team aren't going to know if there's one or two of them or hundreds or thousands of them. And that's kind of the threat with this, you know, they've got guns. Maybe they could try and take one of them down. But maybe there's another one around the corner. Or maybe there's a group of them and maybe they're going to get ambushed. Maybe they're like a cluster. Exactly, and yeah. A nest, once. as it were. Yeah. And it's been really fun to work on and, and see these things move around and how horrific they can be. They're different to us. They perceive the world in a different way. Getting little snippets of it in the darkness and was that, did I see that? Mm. Was it something that moved? Uh, or is it actually just one of the other soldiers that's yeah. stuck in the catacomb? Who's there? We like to try and misdirect people on things, you know, that did you see something, did you not? And that's a great thing within horror, that you think you're going to be scared right now. And we're not going to scare you now. We'll scare you in a minute when I mean, you're coming. not expecting it. It's always coming. Yeah, always. Um, so should we expect a huge amount of, of peril in the game? Definitely. Um, we love to do it. Um, you know, it's fun, fun for us to work on, as horrific as it is. And it's, we know that our fans love it as well. So yeah, there's at least 60 unique deaths and there's a whole ton of variation on that as well. So Merwin and some of the others, you're going to see different things happening to them depending on how you play it out, you know, getting ripped and shredded and torn. And because there's a firefight, there's going to be bullets flying as well and all kinds of stuff. And it's not just the deaths, it's the gore that goes along with it. and you know, lots of blood. Wicked. It sounds absolutely terrifying. I'm, I'm in. No, it's not going to lie, man. It's pretty f***ing bad. What differences have you made or changes have you made to the to the gameplay and mechanics for House of Ashes? We're always evolving the dark pictures. Um, we listen to a lot of the uh, feedback from our fans mm -hmm. um, and, and also our team, what they want to do, how they want to push things forward. So we, we tried some stuff in, in Little Hope with um, you know more camera control, 360 cameras at certain parts, and we really leaned on that again, and it really works well in House of Ashes, lots of the game is set underground and so these sort of corridors which are really tight and oppressive. Creepy. Yeah, indeed. So <laughs> so we've had to learn because you, you take away the fixed cameras and that takes away some opportunities mm. for horror, but we've had to learn new tricks to scare people and you know, ramp up the tension and, and uh, you know, the, the chance for jump scares, which we know some people love. We've also got a new torch mechanic. So, um, you know, it's military themed. So these guys are going to be walking around with weapons with uh, torches mounted on them. We love the lighting that we do, the sort of really inky black darkness that we have uh, and sort of the contrast to the bright areas. And so you're going to need to lean on that torch to allow you to see where you're going, what the threat is and that kind of stuff. We've also done things like um, added difficulty settings to this game. So in Little Hope we added, uh, you know, QTE warning icons as an example. And we've got some really good positive feedback about that, but also some people want to turn that off. We want to allow you to play the game in your way. So with our accessibility settings and difficulty settings, if you want to have a more casual experience, you can change those settings. Still, most of your characters are going to end up dead. But, you know, that's, that's Spoilers, what Spoilers, yeah, indeed. but that's what we come here for. That's yeah. OK, we can deal with it. So I've got to ask, what was it like working with Ashley? So Ashley was fantastic. She researched Rachel. She understood her when she mm -hmm. came on the set, which is so refreshing. She knew her inside out. And Rachel is a flawed character, so she brought that through so fantastically. The rest of the cast were fantastic as well. When we were looking for Joey, Salim helped me. And you didn't tell me this because... You'd flip your shit. We want you to connect to these characters and understand them as humans. We want them to seem real because they're real to us. You know, we spend a long time designing them. And, and I don't mind if you hate any one individual character because you don't like everyone in real life. But maybe you'll like them when you see the journey they go on. Maybe you'll like them once they're dead and you yeah, feel bad about it. Yeah, and you feel bad it. about yeah. it, definitely. <laughs> yeah. But also we want you to save them. We want you to try and save them. You know, we know that some people want to get everyone killed straight away and that's fine. That's their that's playthrough, cool. that's what yeah. they want to do. But, you know, can you get everyone out alive and save as many as you can? It's a lot of replayability there. Indeed, it's yeah. It's forever. I like yeah. that. So, last question. Favourite scene? Favourite scene. So, um, Salim, our Iraqi soldier, and Jason Kolchak, one of the Marines that's there. There's a way that that can play out and a sort of contest between them. And you can make it go in a number of different ways. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. It's really emotional seeing them film it. I was lucky enough to be there and then seeing that come through in game. I think we've got something there. I think that's gold. Um, and then, of course, I love scaring people. So I love the jump scares. I love the, the moments of tension uh, that we bring. We can't hold you in that moment. So we've got some fantastic jokes in there as well to allow you to relax for a moment before we scare you again. <laughs> to take your mind off yeah. the imminent threat. I like that. Dan, thank you so much. This has been really cool to talk about. And I'm sure, you know, I, I, I'm 
excited and terrified in equal part and everyone else is just excited I'm sure of it. and it's been a real pleasure to speak to you and I can't wait to get it into people's hands it's gonna happen what is this place this looks like the worst place in the goddamn world this is something else you think the devil's gonna come just need a minute and it isn't gonna kill us until it does <laughs> Nobody else dies today. That's what you believe. What the hell is going on? I don't know, man. It was not supposed to play out like this. Shit's about to get real in here. Who's there? What the fuck are we up against? First thing to kill you, Sergeant. Yeah, like smoking is the biggest threat to my life right now. Something simple in this goddamn place? Oh, fuck you too. We must work together to defeat them. Yeah, it's beginning to look like that. You got any idea what we're dealing with? If something looks like shit and smells like shit, you don't have to taste it to know that it's shit. Back from the dead, baby. We're facing an enemy we know zero about. An enemy of unknown size and their home turf. Sucks to be us. The devil's gonna come when the sun go down. Closest I've been to hell. I say we get the fuck out of here.